here is not financial advice, even though it's really going to sound like it. I am not a licensed financial advisor and do not do anything I say. The disclaimer is always in the show notes if you ever need a reference. It is the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast, and this past Monday in the United States stock market, uh, we had a little bit of a drop, didn't we? And I can actually stress the word little, because if you are a contrarian investor and you invest in some of the things that we take part in, uh, the type of drop we saw in that market was really nothing to get too scared over, but scared people did get. Twitter was going nuts, financial media was going nuts. All because they thought this was the beginning of the end, all because of a little company called Evergrande in China. Um, some people were calling it Evergrande, which I thought was funny. I don't think it has any Latino influence. I could be wrong, but I don't think it does. Um, but they are defaulting and defaulting hard. And the big question is, is this going to have a ripple effect on the rest of world markets? Now, I say it all the time. I am not a very good macro guy. I just have sources that I draw from just like you do. And from everything I was seeing, it was pretty split down the middle. Some people said it was definitely going to. Some people said it wasn't going to have any effect at all. Uh, but that's what macro people are paid to do. It's just like crypto YouTube. You know, they want clicks. So they put opinions out there even if they don't really have one. So that really wasn't much help. Uh, but what also really wasn't much help is the market just rebounded right back up as the week progressed. Um, but for the first time in probably all of 2021, 20, you know, I think people were legitimately spooked. And I'll bet a lot of you out there were probably wondering at some point, you know, what would happen to all of my, you know, more volatile contrarian investments should this market fall? Is it going to take all of my investments down with it? How much pain am I willing to withstand? Should I just wait for the whole thing to crash and then jump in to some of these investments? So we're going to answer some of these questions on this episode. Now, in terms of how much pain you are willing to withstand, I have no idea, but I can tell you this. If you do not have a very high pain tolerance, you are in the wrong space and you are listening to the wrong podcast. You know, this volatility is what we sign up for. If we want the great upside, we also have to deal with the great downside. So if you are truly meant for this game, you shouldn't be too worried what happens to the market. You should embrace a market crash. As a Forex trader, I am feverishly waiting for a market crash. But as an investor, I am too. Even though I know my portfolio is going to go down at first. So let's talk about that. So when the market finally does crash and the everything bubble bursts, what is going to happen to things like precious metals, crypto, natural resources, you know, things like that? Well, we don't really know for sure because all of these drops, all of these recessions play out differently. Now, fortunately, we do have a bit of history on our side, very recent history, which is nice. We have March of 2020 to look back on. And it was a very interesting fall because of how quickly it rebounded, because of how quickly the government was there to cheat, how quickly they artificially inseminated a dying economy. We've never seen anything like that before. But if you follow macro at all, I think we can all pretty much reasonably assume that if the market legitimately does start falling at an alarming rate, they are probably going to try that again. Now, I want to remind you, too, the Fed was firing trillions of dollars into the economy all the way down. They were calling them bazookas. I remember it very clearly uh, because I was laughing how they were putting legit trillions into the economy, and it just kept falling like nothing happened. Then one day they did it again, and the market finally tapped out and then started that V-shaped rebound. Now, when the market did fall, what went down with it? Pretty much everything. A lot of people in the Bitcoin community, for example, thought it was going to be this perfect safe haven that wasn't going to go down at all if the market crashed. If anything, it was going to immediately go up. But score one for the boomers because the old school macro guys knew that no matter what it is, when the market starts to crash, the riskiest assets go first. Almost always. Uh, but VP, Bitcoin should not be considered risky. Cash is what's really risky. No, it's not. <laughs> Ten years from now, okay. But anything that has the ability to go down 50 to 80% in a crash like that is always going to be considered extremely risky until completely proven otherwise. You know, the only thing that did go up in this crash was cash. Now, why does this happen? 
Well, first of all, a lot of these risky assets involve a lot of leverage. A lot of leverage that, in my opinion, shouldn't be there. You know, you guys all want to wave the DeFi flag and want everything to be absolutely unregulated no matter what. Uh, well, that's fine. You're entitled to think that. But, you know, there's going to be downsides to this, too. There are consequences to a completely lawless society. And as long as we have these places where people can lever up to the tits on Bitcoin, it's not going to take much at all for major drops to start happening. And then will those drops be the catalyst for greater drops thereafter? Well, this week that wasn't the case. But if the market does drop and then just keeps dropping, what's going to happen then? Well, probably the same thing that happened back in March 2020. Now, I'm not bad-mouthing crypto at all. You guys know I love crypto. I have crypto. I'm bullish on crypto. Um, but if you guys think the American stock market is going to legitimately crash and you are not going to take a major hit to your crypto portfolio, you better think again because the chances of that happening are extremely high. And who out there thinks the crypto market is anything but fragile? Look at what happened on Friday. China bans Bitcoin for the 285th time. The whole world should be doing nothing but laughing at this point. Uh, but no, the, the crypto market has a sharp sell-off. The crypto market has, and will for a long time probably have a lot, like a disturbingly high amount of weak, dumb, and over-leveraged hands in it. That is not a good recipe. That is a manipulator's dream come true. So if a complete non-news story can take the market down the way it did... What do you think a stock market crash is going to do? Now, I don't even feel like I should have to explain this, but there's so many people out there that think the crypto market is just this immaculate, bulletproof market, and it's the complete opposite. You know, I can understand being extremely bullish on crypto and being a, even being a maximalist, uh, but just don't add delusional to the mix. Now, you may also think that you're going to be slick and agile and get ahead of it and dump your positions before the market crashes. Well, there were probably a lot of people who did that on Monday. And then the market rebounded, so they flipped out, bought back, and now it's down again. <laughs> you know, this is what happens to these people. Yeah, you want to get cute, you're also going to get wrecked. And I don't recommend doing this anyway. Just be right and sit tight. Acting like you're smart enough to predict a market crash is a bad strategy all the time. Don't do it. Now, what about...